Good afternoon, and welcome one and all to the 418th commencement of The Ohio State University. I am President Michael Drake, and we are excited to welcome you to the historic Ohio Stadium for today's ceremony. I have the privilege and pleasure now of introducing our distinguished speaker. As the Chief Executive Officer of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, our guest guides the work of one of the world's most prominent philanthropic organizations. Work has produced some truly extraordinary outcomes over the last 18 years. The Gates Foundation has played a critical role in reducing malaria mortality in sub-Saharan Africa by more than 50%. This saves hundreds of thousands of lives every year. It has sent 20,000 high-achieving Americans to college. It has empowered women and girls at home and abroad by opening pathways to financial independence and sustainability, uplifting their families, their communities, and their nations along the way. Imagine for a moment that you are Melinda or Bill Gates. Actually, you'd like to imagine that for more than a moment, I'm guessing, but <clears throat> imagine for a moment that you are. And you have uh, really one of the most prominent and successful foundations in history, and you have to select someone to lead that for you. You could choose anyone in the world. Whom would you select? Well, you'd want someone who is an incredible innovator, someone who asks tough questions, and a leader who knows how to elevate the work of those around them. You would need someone with experience tackling big challenges and finding solutions. And that person is Dr. Sue Desmond Hellman. As a young physician, <clears throat> she was on the front lines of the emerging AIDS HIV epidemic and the fight against cancer, experiences that inspired a search for new ways to heal her patients. As a scientist, she developed revolutionary cancer treatments that have helped save countless lives and change the way we fight this devastating disease. She was the first woman to serve as the chancellor of the University of California, San Francisco, where she steered the school through financial crises to achieve new levels of excellence in education, research, and healthcare. Today, at the Gates Foundation, Dr. Desmond Hellman is addressing two of the most significant challenges of our time, eradicating disease and ending extreme poverty. We are grateful that she is here to share her wisdom with the class of 2018. Graduates, families, and friends, please join me in welcoming Dr. Sue Desmond Hellman. Imagine we had a time machine, and you could fast forward 20 years from now. It's 2038. We've got hoverboards, tourist trips to the moon, 3D printed food. Life is tremendously exciting. 2038. But what about you? Where are you? What are you doing? Close your eyes for just a moment and think about that. OK, did anyone imagine themselves being the commencement speaker and receiving an honorary doctoral degree from The Ohio State University? Uh, maybe one or two of you, <laughs> but most of you not. Well, neither would I if someone had asked me that same question when I sat where you're sitting right now. Here's why. That was before I went from life being all about me to it being all about us, from worrying about my grades, my CV, my career, 
and thinking instead what I could do for our world and our pursuit of human progress. Graduates, as you think about what comes next, move your thoughts from thinking about me to thinking about us. Here's how I got there. I'm the second of seven kids, born in what was then a farming community, Napa, California. I moved to the tiny town of Reno, Nevada, when the population was about 50,000 and there were sagebrush-laden fields everywhere. There, in Reno, my pharmacist dad and his friend opened a family-owned drugstore. I hear you, pharmacists. <laughs> Growing up, I attended small Catholic schools with my brothers and sisters. I loved school. I loved math and science. In our family, we said, do you like subjects like mom, a former English teacher, or do you like subjects like dad? I was like my dad. I would walk around as a kid with his white shirt, my doctor coat, and a plastic stethoscope giving orders to my sisters who played nurse and receptionist. I participated in every sport, literally every sport. If they had a girls team, I was in. In track in those days, the longest distance was 880 yards because you know we were girls. From the age of 15, I worked every summer saving money for college, but I wasn't suffering. My last job for three years was a lifeguard at Lake Tahoe. Pretty good gig. When I was a freshman at the University of Nevada, Reno, my youngest sister, Jen, was born. I raced through my undergrad in three years, helping out my mom and living at home, eager to get to medical school. I was in the second graduating class at the University of Nevada Medical School, and by my fourth year, I was eager to get out of my small town and out of my parents' house. So where did I come? I came right here to the Ohio State. <laughs> I rented a room, spent a month on the cardiology service, and experienced Buckeye football for my first and only time. I loved every single minute, just as I'm sure you have. But here's the point. I was 24 years old from a small town in Nevada, and Columbus was the furthest east I had ever been. So when I think about the kind of life I imagined myself living back then, there is no way it would have ever resembled any part of my life as it has been. I felt and acted like an underdog, seeing other people experience a lifestyle and opportunities that seemed foreign to me. As a result, I was constantly striving to demonstrate my worth, showing that I could keep up. And when I was accepted as a medicine resident at the University of California, San Francisco, the first resident ever from Nevada, that feeling grew even stronger. I remember the first day so well. We were all sitting around a big table, 25 new medical residents, and we ran around, everyone introducing themselves. I sank further and further into my seat. All I could hear was Stanford, Johns Hopkins, Harvard, and so on. When my turn came, I had to say University of Nevada, Reno. And I felt like adding, yes, it does have a medical school. And you know, I read the same books as you did. I did. Some people call that feeling imposter syndrome. That sense that you don't belong, that others are somehow more ready, more worthy, more likely to succeed. All I know is I spent a lot of time, too much time, proving myself. 
And then I had the chance to leave the United States for the first time. And that's when everything changed. I went to Uganda. My year spent learning medicine, learning oncology at UC San Francisco coincided with a terrifying AIDS epidemic that was sweeping San Francisco Bay Area. My experience on the front lines meant that I was asked to go to Uganda to help. I became the physician who cared for all the adult cancer patients at the Uganda Cancer Institute while teaching and conducting research. It was an incredibly difficult time in Uganda, and the job was emotionally and physically challenging. Remember, I hadn't been across an ocean before that. But I was never the same again. I realized for the first time that being smart doesn't matter unless you use your intelligence for a greater purpose. I started thinking about how to serve humanity, how to make a contribution to humanity. That's when I went from it being all about me to being all about us. For each of you, it will be a different experience that does that. The important thing is that you have it as soon as possible. I regret that it took me so long because proving yourself is way less important than making a contribution. Graduates, one of the most common things we all do is underestimate ourselves, underestimate our capacity to make a difference for humanity. But look at you. For one thing, you've got a head start on that goofy kid from Reno. Thanks to technology and social media, you're already globally engaged with an understanding of the world far beyond anything my generation had at your age. And then there's this other big asset that you all have, the asset we're celebrating today. Class of 2018, you have had the benefit of attending one of the best universities in our country. There is no other major research university in America that is opening access and achieving success for low-income students and first-generation students as much as this one. The Ohio State is making your stories one of possibility, one filled with opportunity. The challenge for you is how to make the most of it. How will you do that? How will you make your own transition from me to us? I want to share two lessons I learned along that journey I just told you about. Here's the first one. Question yourself. Question yourself because good intentions are not enough. That's still all about me. My moving to Uganda conducting cancer research, even today as CEO of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I actually find it odd that I get credit for the jobs I've had. People would say to me, oh, you worked in Uganda. That's impressive. Don't give me credit for moving. Ask me what I got done. What was the impact of me going? How did people's lives improve? Here's what I want to be able to say that in Uganda, students learned medicine from my teaching that allowed them to care for others. And very sick patients had less suffering because I helped them with their cancer. Or that as a cancer researcher, I was part of teams that developed drugs that helped millions of women survive breast cancer with fewer side effects and more targeted and effective therapy. Or, or that thanks to the work we're doing with many others at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, more children than ever before are surviving past their fifth birthday and that we're on the cusp of wiping polio off the face of the earth.
What keeps me awake at night these days isn't the thought of failing an exam or worrying about people and what they'll think of me in a job interview. What keeps me awake at night is that Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation might not make a big enough impact. Don't settle for the comfort of good intentions. Get out of your echo chamber, challenge your beliefs, and challenge your own mindset. That's my first big lesson. Question yourself. My second big lesson is to question what other people tell you. Because the best advice isn't always the best advice. As I weighed my opportunity to work in Uganda, I have a very distinct memory of a senior colleague telling me that I would ruin my academic career by leaving the country. How many of you would ignore that advice? And by the way, it was very good advice because he was right. For more than two years, I didn't publish enough or network or do all the things needed to become a tenure track faculty member. When I returned from Uganda, I thought I'd get the professional equivalent of a ticker tape parade. Instead, there were no funds available for me to continue as a faculty member, no options for pursuing global health or cancer research as I had dreamt. Just as my more experienced colleague had warned me, my academic career had ended and I needed to find something else to do. But here's the point. That was the best advice I never took. Because it meant I finally switched my metrics, my measurement for success, from what something could do for my career to how I would use my skills and what I'd learned in service of human progress. Class of 2018, it's your turn now. Through your resilience, your persistence, your brilliance, you have earned the right to seize the next exciting opportunity. And when you move your own thoughts from thinking about me to thinking about us, you will each be embarking on the path to leading a meaningful life. A meaningful life. One where you don't just make a dollar, you make a difference. Where you don't just settle for personal gain, you fulfill a noble purpose. Graduates, here we are in this big stadium. So you all know there are those on the field who make progress happen. And there are those on the sidelines who ask, what just happened? It's 2038. Which one are you? Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you very much, and another round of applause for Dr. Sue Desmond Hellman. Today we're also graduating a remarkable group of scholars. Students earning diplomas designated summa cum laude are recognized for grade point averages of 3.9 or higher. Magna cum laude for grade point averages of 3.7 or higher. Cum laude for having grade point averages of 3.5 or higher. With distinction and with honors, recognize work completed in special honors programs in the colleges. Since completion of a graduate program is in and of itself a reflection of academic excellence, no further honors are noted on these diplomas. The undergraduate students graduating with high curricular achievement are wearing the honors emblem, a scarlet and gray tasseled braid over their gown. Their honors are listed beneath their names in the commencement program. And would all those graduating with honors please stand and will the audience join me in now recognizing these outstanding students. In this class also are cadets and midshipmen in the Reserve Officer Training Corps. 
They combined military training with their university curriculum. At a special ceremony held yesterday, they were commissioned as officers in our armed forces. Their names are listed in today's program. Will the newly commissioned officers stand so that we may recognize you for your service to this nation? Please stand. Thank you. The class of 2018, graduates, congratulations. It's great to be here with all of you. A special wave. One of the most gratifying aspects of my role at our university is meeting our Buckeye graduates and learning about the work that they are doing in their communities. Buckeyes are everywhere. And sometimes there are multiple Buckeyes in the same family. We, we love when that happens. In fact, one of our graduates today, Christian Buell, is a fourth-generation Buckeye. Her mother, her grandmother, and her great-grandmother are all alumni. Go Bucks! We also, though, very importantly, have uh, 1,700 graduates here today who will be the first in their families to receive a college degree, and a round of applause for all of them, please. We're very proud of you. We, in addition, have 300, uh, I mentioned the uh, cadets and midshipmen, midshipmen who are being commissioned today, but we also have many veterans and dependents and others who are in the reserves. Uh, we have today, actually, the most in our history, 300 service-connected uh, men and women are graduating from our university. And a round of applause for that incredible number. <laughs> and to all of our graduates, my message today is simply, dream big. The world needs your time and talents. The world and the next generation need your attention. We trust you will exemplify the motto of our university, which is education for citizenship. By using your, educa by using your education and your passion to make a difference. And when you consider who you are and who you want to be in this world, you are lucky to have so many shining examples of what that looks like when it's done at the highest level. Many of these people are here with us today. Parents, grandparents, professors, mentors, our honorees. They've led values-driven lives. They know what's important to them and why. I encourage you to follow in their footsteps. Before you make a big decision, consult your inner compass, and then do what you know is right. Good decisions lead to good places. Think, for instance, of the good decisions that led you to where you are here today at this very moment. The path ahead not yet, might, might not yet be fully illuminated, but it will be made ever more bright by the light of your education. Dr. Martin Luther, Jun Martin Luther King Jr. once said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. We have great faith and confidence that you will, step by step, individually and collectively, extend Ohio State's reach in our state, across the country, and around the world. In closing, let me quote a favorite poem of mine by Rabindranath Tagore. It is, I slept and dreamt of joy. I awoke to face a life of service. I acted, and behold, service is joy. Congratulations, class of 2018. Well done. Thank you so much. Go Bucks!